in a world of fast motion cooking where store-bought buns get millions of views. One woman is still kneading dough in search of the ultimate pull-apart bun. Well, hello there, my small but loyal YouTube audience. If you're new to working with yeast breads, welcome to the club. This is the part where I should probably say something encouraging, like, I can't wait to show you how easy it is to make your own dinner rolls. But that would be lying. So I'll tell you like it is. Look, if you're new to this, and I don't care that you make wonderful muffins, brownies, or zucchini bread, if you're new to working with yeast doughs, making things like baguette, focaccia, ciabatta, brioche, you will have to do a little homework. In the description below this video is a lot of crucial information that you will need to know about equipment, ingredients, measurements, and timing. So make sure you read that before you get started. Now, the good news is that these rolls are way more forgiving than something like baguette. So they are a great way to get your feet wet with yeast doughs. And this dough is very versatile. So once you master this, you'll be able to make so many wonderful creations like monkey bread, hala, what's that thing called? Wrapped up? Babka. Dinner rolls, of course, so many, many possibilities. This dough is very similar to brioche. The only difference is that it has more milk and less eggs. It also employs a somewhat unusual but very easy roux technique called tangzhong. I'm probably mispronouncing it. This technique is popular in Japanese bakeries and it gives the bread exquisitely light and fluffy texture. My recipe is based on the one I found on the King Arthur Flour website. The flour I'll be using in this recipe is King Arthur unbleached all-purpose flour. It has a higher protein content than most other all-purpose flours and produces great texture. If you want more chew, try bread flour, but using all-purpose flour from other brands could lead to unpredictable results. There, you've been warned. All right, let's get our dry ingredients together. We'll need 310 grams of King Arthur unbleached all-purpose flour. From now on, I'll refer to it as just flour. 50 grams granulated sugar, 2 teaspoons diamond crystal kosher salt, or 1 teaspoon table salt, and 1 tablespoon of SAF instant yeast. Put them all into a bowl of a stand mixer and whisk to combine. To make the roux, combine 43 grams of water, 43 grams of whole milk, and 14 grams of flour in a small skillet or pot with curvy sides. The curvy sides Help the whisk get into the corners. Whisk until no lumps remain and place the saucepan over medium-low heat. Cook this mixture whisking constantly until it is very thick. At first, nothing will happen, but be patient and keep whisking and in 3-5 to five minutes it will get very thick and will look like this. Kind of the consistency of creamy mashed potatoes. As soon as your roux is done, take it off the heat Measure 113 grams of cold whole milk and scrape the hot roux into it. Whisk to combine, then add one large cold egg. Combining the hot roux with fridge temperature milk and egg will give you a perfect temperature of wet ingredients for your dough. Altogether, there should be room temperature. Add all the wet ingredients to the mixer bowl with the dry ingredients. Then add 57 grams of barely melted unsalted butter. It shouldn't be hot and it's okay if parts of butter are still solid. Mix on low speed with a dough hook until all ingredients are combined. Increase the speed to medium low, four on a KitchenAid mixer, and knead for four minutes. It's okay if the dough is wet and sticks to the bowl. Don't add flour. Once it develops enough gluten, it will not stick as much. But wetness in the dough is what gives you holes in the finished product. Scrape down the sides of the bowl, flip the dough over or rearrange it the best you can, and knead on medium-low speed another four minutes. Scrape, flip, 
and need the last four minutes. So our total needing time is about 12 minutes. The reason for all the rearranging is that unlike commercial mixers, home mixers don't knead evenly and need a little extra help to produce good results. By the time you're done, your dough should be very stretchy and elastic and extremely difficult to rip. Here's one way to test if you've developed enough gluten. It's called a window pane test. Grab a piece of dough and try to slowly stretch it until you can see through it. The key here is to do it slowly. If you just tag at it, even a very strong dough can rip. An occasional hole is fine, but see how I can stretch it into a very thin membrane without ripping it? This means I have developed a lot of gluten, which will result in light and airy inside after baking. Once you have developed enough gluten, you can return the dough back to the mixer on the lowest speed if you want to incorporate some other sweet or savory additions. One of my favorites is sauteed onions and poppy seeds. The recipe for that and some other addition ideas are in the description below this video. But if this is your first time doing this recipe, it would be wise to skip the additions. I like to give the dough a few folds by hand to form it into a cohesive ball. If you've never kneaded the dough by hand, here's how it works. Fold the dough toward your Yourself. Press it together and rotate 90 degrees. Fold, press, rotate. Then roll it a bit in your hands to seal the bottom. Place it smooth side up into a lightly oiled bowl with at least 5 cup capacity and press it down. Cover with plastic and let it double in size. This will take 1 to 3 hours depending on your room temperature. At 70 Fahrenheit it will take roughly 2 hours. If your house is very cold and you want to speed things up a bit, try filling a pan with boiling water and placing it in the bottom of your oven. Then set the bowl with the dough on a rack in the middle of the oven. Just make sure that the oven is completely cold before you put your dough in and that nobody turns it on. It might be good to put a sign on it. Oops, I got carried away shooting another video and my dough was about to run away. Kids don't do this at home. Proceed to the next step before the dough gets this huge. Turn the dough out onto a lightly floured work surface and deflate it completely. That means whack it with your hands until you pop all the bubbles. These are not the bubbles we want. The bubbles we want are from the next rise, called the proof. That's what happens when the dough grows in its final shape. Now we need to divide the dough into buns. How you do that depends on what pan you're baking in. My ideal pan for this recipe is a 9 inch round cake pan. It will fit 11 buns, 8 on the outside and three on the inside. If you didn't add anything to your dough, each bun should be about 58 grams. If you added other things like raisins or onions, weigh your whole dough and then divide it by 11 to get the weight of each roll. When I was making this video, my cake pan wasn't available and I tried to use a 13 by 9 pan with 12 buns. It worked okay, but I didn't get much pull apart effect since the buns weren't close enough. Weigh each piece adding or subtracting dough as necessary to end up with buns of roughly the same size. Flatten out each piece, then roll it up gently, pressing after each fold, and smoosh the ends together to make a rough ball. This is called pre-shaping, and it gets the dough used to the final shape. Cover with plastic and rest 10 minutes. Then put your hand over each ball and roll it around on the work surface. This develops surface Tension. The rolls should be smooth on top and completely sealed on the bottom. When I started working with yeast doughs, I thought shaping was just for looks. Well, it's not. It organizes all those gluten strands and gives you a much better texture after the bread is baked. Place your rolls smooth side up into a lightly buttered baking dish and cover with plastic. Let them rise until doubled in size, about one hour. When your buns are almost risen, preheat the oven to 350 Fahrenheit for at least 20 minutes with the rack in the middle. Whisk one yolk with one tablespoon of milk and brush the egg wash onto the rolls. Don't overdo this. You don't want the egg dripping all over. 
place in the middle of the oven for 25 minutes or until an instant read thermometer reads at least 195 Fahrenheit in the middle of the center rolls. As always, I'm using my trusty Thermopen, but all Thermoworks thermometers are great. Immediately, brush the rolls with one tablespoon of melted butter. This step produces a softer top crust. Cool in the pan for 10 minutes, then transfer them to a rack to cool until warm. And dig in! Let me cut one in half so that you can see the texture. Look at those bubbles! But this is no wonder bread! See how bouncy and resilient it is? Learning this technique can take your baking skills to a whole new level. This dough can be used for sticky buns, donuts, chocolate babka, Russian pirashki, hala, monkey bread, and so many other sweet and savory creations. This video was brought to you by viewers like you. If you liked it, click here to support my channel, don't forget to subscribe, hit that little bell button for notifications so that you don't miss a video, and if you're ever in the Boston area, maybe I'll see you in one of my classes.